Well, actually, whenever I first got put up for this, um, it was a mistake. I was actually sent through the part of Arthur. So, so I kind of received the, the scenes for Arthur and um, hadn't received the full script, so I just received the scenes and I'd read through them. I know you think you hear a series called Merlin. Everyone assumes it's about an old Merlin and about a young Arthur, so I, I thought, oh, a young King Arthur, I can see that. Um, arrived at the edition, had prepared all the scenes, and it was a mistake that actually wanted to see me for the part of Merlin. So, um, so whenever I arrived there, it was it was a bit of a mix up, uh, and they kind of handed me scenes for Merlin at the last minute, and I had five minutes to read over them, and um, so it was a bit. So when I, the kind of start of it was a bit was a bit muddled, but uh, once I got the scripts through and, and read them all, I got really really excited about it, and and as the process goes on, you get more and more attached to it. So I was just really hoping that I would get the part, and I was lucky enough to do that. Okay, Merlin without the beard um, is is not the experienced wizard and warlock that everyone knows. He is a bit of a loose cannon. Um, you know, I don't th even think Merlin knows what to expect of himself a lot of the time. He, um, you know, he, he will end up doing these things, throwing himself into ridiculous situations that he can't get out of, and it normally ends up resorting to something that involves a very complicated form of magic that he has to use. Um, Undercover, uh, obviously without being noticed in Camelot. How did you do that? Did you incant a spell in your mind? I don't know any spells. So what did you do? He's going to be a lot more energetic than, than the old bearded uh, Merlin and. Um, and of course he's got a lot to learn and the audience learn it all with him. And I think that's what's, what's important about this is, is the journey that he makes to get to the point that everyone knows. There is, there is a tension um, between Uther and Merlin and I, I don't think it's magic related, um, but to be fair, I think, I think there's quite a lot of um, tension between a lot of characters and Uther because he, you know, he is the king and, and anyone feels nervous around him, especially Merlin. Thomas James Collins is a judge guilty of conspiring to use enchantments and magic. And pursuant to the laws of Camelot, I, Uther Pendragon, have decreed that such practices are banned on penalty of death. Um, if, you know, just recently, you know, I've been thrown into a few um, scenes and a few scenarios where I've had to um, defend Arthur and, and, and plead Uther to, to not, not be harsh on him and to, and um, it fails miserably. It was me. It was me who used magic to kill Gwen's father. Gwen is not the sorcerer. I am. When you're stood in front of someone like Anthony Head, you know, <laughs> never mind, you know, King Uther, you're not going to win. And Merlin very rarely does when he when he's dealing with Uther. My servant fought. Your the servant. You make these outrageous accusations against a knight on the word of your servant. I believe he's telling the truth. My lord, am I really to be judged on some hearsay from a boy? As I've seen those snakes come alive. How dare you interrupt? Guards! I think the great thing about this show is that each episode is so completely different from the next. You've obviously got this sort of thread of the character relationships going right through, but the com there's a completely new uh, storyline, completely different each week. I mean, I can't, you know, I'm reading the scripts myself and can't believe how different each one is. <laughs> Here? I told you to keep moving. <laughs> Come on. Run. Do you want some moving target practice? <laughs> hey. Come on, that's enough. What? You've had your fun, my friend. Do I know you? Uh, I'm Merlin. So I don't know you? No. Yet yeah, you called me friend. That was my mistake. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I'd never have a friend who could be such an ass. <laughs> yes, Arthur and me get off to a pretty rough start. Um, I end up um, insulting him, not realising who he is. Um, 
Therefore, that does not go down well with, with Arthur at all. He's the king's uh, son, he's the prince of Camelot. Uh, Merlin should not have done what he did to him. Tell me, Merlin, do you know how to walk on your knees? No. Would you like me to help you? I wouldn't if I were you. Why? What are you going to do to me? You have no idea. Be my guest. Come on. Come on. Come on. From the get-go, it's a no-go with Arthur. Um, once they're forced into a situation where they have to be together, i.e. Merlin gets made Arthur's servant, I think they can't help but like each other's quirks. I think, I think if you spend any amount of time with, with someone, you're gonna end up, you know, having a likability with them. And, um, and I think the thing with, with Merlin and Arthur is it's a very slow process. They're, they're, Arthur will not give Merlin many chances um, for what he did in the first place. Oh, don't run away. From you? Oh, thank God. I thought you were deaf as well as dumb. Look, I've told you you're an ass. I just didn't realise you were a royal one. Oh, what are you going to do? Get your daddy's men to protect you? <laughs> but what's nice is that we're getting to a stage where Merlin is really, really trying to be his friend. He really wants to be his friend and, and Arthur doesn't often give him many chances. He may do. I hope he does. <laughs> How small you are for such a great destiny. Why? What do you mean? What destiny? Your gift, Merlin, was given to you for a reason. So there is a reason. <sighs> Arthur is the once and future king who will unite the land of Albion. Right. But he faces many threats, from friend and foe alike. I don't see what this has to do with me. Everything. Without you, Arthur will never succeed. Without you, there will be no Albion. No. No, you've got this wrong. There is no right or wrong. Only what is and what isn't. But I'm serious. If anyone wants to go and kill him, they can go ahead. In fact, I'll give them a hand. <laughs> None of us can choose our destiny, Merlin. That's a huge shock for Merlin to find out his destiny is to protect Arthur and to see that he becomes, um, you know, the king. It's, it's unthinkable for Merlin because, of course, all he knows of Arthur is that he's this, he, he's just this idiot who, who's a bully and who, who humiliated him. And, um, and for, for Merlin, that, uh, to begin with, that's, that's a little hard to take on. But he's the sort of person who, who will accept this, and although it's something that maybe he just will reluctantly do, he'll do it with all his heart and he'll put it all in. Guys? <clears throat> Yeah, well, when Gaius first sees Merlin use magic, it's it's in a it's in a good way. It's Mer Merlin uses it to 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 help Gaius, but Gaius um, hadn't I don't think had a clue what that Merlin would would have, would have any of these kind of skills or anything. Um, so at the start, it's completely like, what did you do? I think it's, it's a sense of intrigue. Kill me. Oh, I, I, I have no idea what happened. If anyone has seen that... Oh, no, that, that, was, that was nothing to do with me. That, that was... I know what it was. I just want to know where you learned how to do it. No way. So how is it you know magic? I don't. Um, real sense of interest. He tests me a few times to see if I'll do things. He's really trying to find out a lot, a lot about what I can actually do. And, um, and I think it becomes very clear to him sort of where, where my path is, where my, where my destiny lies. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very much a huge part for him to help me along the way. This project feels, feels huge because um, the sets that we're actually working in at the minute and that we're in now um, are, are fantastic. We, we've got so many sets that have built up over the while and the amount of work and, and that people have put in is, is fantastic. And of course we're filming both here in Cardiff on the sets and in France um, as well, in Chateau there. And, um, 
And I think when you combine the two, we've seen, because being out in the shadow, it is absolutely amazing. It is Camelot. When you go out there, it is Camelot. And it's great just to be there and, and see that. I loved being in, in France at the, at the in Pierrefonds, um, in the castle. Um, I had never really done, you know, outdoor scenes before and, um, and things like that. I found being on location fantastic. It also made these sets make a lot more sense. When you walk down a corridor and then, you know, it was cut to a scene where you go in here, it made a lot more sense of, of the scale of the thing and where you'd come from. And um, so, yeah, I absolutely love Loved it out in France. It was brilliant. Yeah. It feels amazing to be to be able to be a part of it, to 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 be here doing it every day, um, and if, and everybody just puts 110 percent into everything. So many people that I you know can't even keep account of working together on this project, um, and yeah, I've got I've got a good feeling. I think it, I think it, it feels really good that we're all that everyone's binding together and, and pulling pulling out a good result. I think. I think the special effects in this are are really really exciting. Um, I saw a little clip today of something that I'd done a while ago, and it's it's had me grinning all day. It's just because it's, I think the the, the detail that's been put into this is is fantastic. When when you're speaking to a green screen, you're kind of there talking to literally a ball on a stick, um, trying to imagine what 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 a dragon could possibly look like and what he would possibly you know be saying to you, and you can only guess. Um, but whenever the uh, whenever the CGI guys get their hands on it, and you see what they're doing, and you see how it's all coming together, there's a whole host of of, of creatures that are that are coming out that, that they just create, and 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 it's amazing to see the sort of imagination of of the writers coming up with it. Then the art department creating them, then the costume people and the CGI people and this and this and it builds till you get this, like the likes of what's over there at the minute, which is this, which is this um, she elder, which is like a big evil fairy that they've, that some guy has spent five hours in prosthetics doing. And you see it and you go, that whole process was completely worth it. You're safe now, I promise. I think within this series, certainly within this, this first series, we're very much focusing on these new experiences and new things. And of course, I think as, as the characters do grow, their experiences um, become more defined and, um, and they will look at things in a more mature way. Oh, no. What? She knows the only place an antidote can be found is the forest of Bala. Arthur could be walking into a trap. As in terms of where where the scripts are going, we have we have no idea. You know, it's as much a surprise to us as, as to the audience. And um, but certainly the the writing is fantastic, and and we, we get it's like Christmas whenever an episode comes through because you're getting to see it for the first time. And so we're just very excited about where it's all going to go. Mm -hmm.